Today we're going to be looking at the 2019 May June CXC Mathematics Pass paper. And without further ado, we get right into the question. I'm going to increase the size here so we can have more space to work. And this is question 1A. And it says using a calculator, otherwise evaluate each of the following. All right. And in the first scenario, we're looking at fractions. So we have two and a quarter minus one and three fifth, all divided by three. So we're going to have to work out the numerator first. Now, to make it easier for some of us, what we could do is to convert the fractions at the top to improper fractions. So we have two and a quarter. To convert that to an improper fraction, we say four times two, which is eight plus one gives me nine. So I'm going to have 9 over 4 minus, and then 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8, minus 8 over 5. Now, whenever we add or we subtract fractions, we start by finding the LCM. So in this case, my LCM would be 20. Now, bear in mind that I'm taking the numerator, right? So this is my numerator. All right. Now we say 9 into 20 is 5, I will multiply that 5 by the 9 in the numerator. So 5 times 9 is 45. We say 5 into 20 is 4, and 4, 8 is 32. So this actually becomes 45 minus 32, which is going to give me 13 over 20. Alright, so this is what my numerator works out to be. Now I'm going to recombine it with my denominator, but I'm not going to put it back as a fraction. Instead of putting back this fraction bar here, over 3, I'm going to put divided by 3. So this actually becomes 13 over 20. And whenever we divide by a fraction, and you can actually put 3 over 1, because all whole numbers can be written over 1. So when I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to have times 1 over 3. All right. And how do we multiply fractions? It's numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So let me take it to the side here. So I'm going to have 13 times 1. All right. I don't have to go there. I'm going to have 13. And I'm going to have 20 times 3, which is going to give me 60. So my answer is 13 over 60. Uh, we could also make use of our calculators in this case. Here I have a Casio calculator. So I'm going to attempt to put in all this fraction inside of my calculator. Now well, the first thing I'm going to need is the main fraction bar here. So I'm going to put that in. Now in my numerator, I'm going to have two mixed fractions. And to get those mixed fractions, I'm going to press shift and I'm going to press the fraction bar here. So that would be for my first mixed fraction, right? I put a minus sign. And then we press shift again on the fraction bar. And that's our second mixed fraction. So we click right in the circles and put in what we want. So now I'm going to have, let me go back. This would be 2 and a quarter into 2 and a quarter minus 1 and 3 fifths all over three right that's exactly what we want and we press the equal sign so we end up with 13 over 60 just like with the previous scenario so we could put all of it inside of a calculator as shown below or we could work it out manually as we have over here you will still get the full two marks for either case now moving to 1a part 2 it says 2.14 sine 75 degrees. Give your answer to two decimal places. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put all that inside of my calculator. So I'm going to have 2.14 sine 75 degrees, right? And you notice a bracket was opened. So I have to close the bracket. And we press equal. So it says to two decimal places. So this is 2.067. Now, the first decimal place would be 0, and the second one would be 6. Now, we look at the number that comes after the second decimal place, which is 7. And the rule says, once it's 5 or above, we have to round up. So, we're going to be rounding up the 6. So, my answer is actually going to be 2.07. When I round up, so it's going to be 2.07. 
All right, we now move on to question 1B. It says, Irma's take-home pay is $4,320 per fortnight. And fortnight refers to every two weeks. Each fortnight, Irma's pay is allocated according to the following table. So we have the items and we have the amount allocated. So we have rent, which is X. That is unknown. We have food. We have other living expenses, which is 2X, also unknown. And we have savings. And then we have the total for, for the fortnight, which is 4000 $320. All right, it says, what is Irma's annual take-home pay? And then here comes a critical piece of information. Assume that she works 52 weeks in any given year. Now, if she works 52 weeks in any given year and she's paid every fortnight, all we need to find out here is how many two weeks do we have in that particular year. So we can say the number of two weeks Two weeks would simply be 52 divided by 2 and that is going to give me 26 all right so she's going to be paid 26 times for the year all right in other words we are saying that there are 26 two weeks in a year now she's paid four thousand three hundred and twenty dollars per fortnight every two weeks and then there are 26 of them so the total she's paid for the year, all right? You can just write that total for the year is equal to 26 times $4,320. And remember, we're dealing with money here. So your final answer should have on the dollar sign. All right, try not to write below the line. This comes out to be $112,320. And that's what she's going to get at the end of the year. If we sum up everything she get every two weeks. 1B part 2 says determine the amount of money that Irma allocates for rent each month. And what we did here was to take out the table and put it on the right here. Now please bear in mind that this table shows the amount of money she allocates every two weeks. Now we know in a month we have four weeks. So what we have to assume here is that whatever she allocates every two weeks it will be doubled every month since a month has four weeks so i can find the amount that she allocates her rent every two weeks and of course when i double that i would get the amount for the month so that is exactly what we're going to do we know that the total amount of money allocated over here is four thousand three hundred and twenty which means that i can create an equation to determine the value of x and that is for for nightly or for every two weeks so i'm going to have what i can say here is that x plus 629 plus 2x plus 1750 and all this is equal to her fortnightly pay which is four thousand three hundred and twenty dollars right now looking for the like terms here we have x and 2x which is going to be 3x plus if we combine 629 750 that is going to give me 2379 is equal to 4320 all right and this is basic transposition so we need a value of x since this is positive we can take it over and subtract so i'm going to have 3x equal 4320 minus 2379 and that breaks down to give me 3x equal 1941 now to get the value of x we simply divide each side by 3 so x is equal to 647 dollars but this money is for the fortnight good this is for every two weeks we know that there are four weeks in a month so we can actually say the rent allocation per month all right would be equal to 2 multiplied by 647 since we have two fortnights in a month this value breaks down to be and you just put, plug that inside 1294 dollars per month so the important details here to remember is that whatever is given in the table is fortnightly 
So for the month, we know that there are two fortnights in a month. So whatever we get for the fortnight, which is $647 for the rent, we have to double it to get the amount for the month. And let us move on to 1B part 3. It says, all of Irma's savings is used to pay her son's tuition or her son's university tuition costs, which is $150,000. If Irma's pay remains the same and she saves the same amount of money each month, what is the minimum number of years that she must work in order to save enough money to cover her son's tuition costs? Now, in the initial stages, bear in mind that the table here tells us how much money she gets every fortnight or every two weeks. In part one of the question, we had worked out the amount of fortnights they were in a year. We said that there are 26 fortnights in a year. 26 fortnights. in a year and per fortnight she's saving 1750 so her yearly saving is going to be equal to 26 times 1750 we can plug that right into our calculator and we get 45,500. So that is the amount of money she's saving every year. How do I find the number of years she needs to save? Well, I'm going to take the tuition costs and I'm going to divide it by the amount of money she's saving per year to know the number of years she would have to save to be able to make that amount of money. So the number of years would be equal to 150,000 over 45,500, all right? And of course, this is assuming that everything remains the same. So once again, we just simply plug this into the calculator. This boils down to 3.333 years. So in all, if it's gonna be 3.33 years, it means that it'll have been three complete years and then it would have gone into the fourth year. So in order to complete this entire cost, she would actually have to save for four years. So you, you seem to write a statement here that she must save for four years. All right, because at the end of the third year, she would not have had the complete amount of money. All right, the point three means that she would have gone into the fourth year. So in all, she would have to save four years in order to have the full tuition amount of money right here.